Good morning everybody and welcome to my channel. My name's Elaine and this is a channel that is predominantly about cross stitch. I do give you a bit of a book review as well for those that like that and today um, I'm going to show you a bit of knitting as well because I haven't done that for a very long time so and there is a bit of a reason behind it but we'll come to that as we go along. How are we all? I have to say it is absolutely freezing here in my little corner of the UK really freezing but it is one of those days where it's bright blue skies sunshine but you step outside and it's like you've walked into a fridge actually I think it's colder than if you've walked into a fridge so my dogs absolutely love it they the colder the better in fact one of them is outside sitting in the garden at the moment, my biggest one, Prince, that I showed you a picture of last time. Yeah, he's out there laying in it because that's just the way he rolls, basically. Anyway, I did take a couple of pictures from my dog walk this morning um, just to show you like just how cold it is because I think you can just tell by the pictures. It was a really hard frost, so it's really white, but... Um, yeah, and you get to see where I walk my dogs every day as well. I've just realised, you know, that I'm a bit of um, a contradiction today, aren't I? Because I thought, oh, I'll put a pair of Christmas earrings in. So I've put a pair of little ice skates on, just as a little nod towards Christmas. And then I realised I've got a, a my Salem sweatshirt on. <laughs> so <laughs> we've gone halloween -y Christmas. Oh, well, never mind. That's the way we go. So... Yeah, so it is freezing, um, but yeah, what can I say? I, I don't like winter, I don't, but if it's going to be cold and wintry, then when it's bright like this, it's at least, you know, quite pleasant. They are forecasting we might get a bit of snow um, tomorrow. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we don't because I am not, I don't like driving in it. I just don't. So um, I'm hoping that's not going to happen. Okay, so this is the last video that you're going to get from me before Christmas. Um, I, I'm sorry, um, you're in my craft room and I don't decorate it for Christmas. All my decorations are downstairs. So, but I'm sure you've seen lots of other floss tubers who have got brilliant decorations up. So um, you'll just have to enjoy that rather than mine. Right, so what have I got for you today? So I've got my whip update. I've got where I am with whip go. Um, a little bit about plans for next year. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, I've got two finishes. I know. You're thinking, good grief, Elaine, you've gone for it. Like <laughs> I had a finish in my last video um, and I've got two this time. So, yeah. Go me. Uh, I've got a new start as well. And last time, if you remember, I asked you for a bit of advice around um, starting all the things. And it was really good to read all your comment commentary, actually. Um, and I've made a bit of a decision, a lot of which is based on your advice. <laughs> so you only have yourselves to blame, folks, for, <laughs> for this. Um, so, yeah, anyway. I'm digressing already and, and I've promised myself that we're not going to be so long this time because um, it is Saturday morning and I always have a grocery delivery on a Saturday morning but it's an hour away yet and I figured an hour will be plenty of time for this I think. Right should we start with my finishes then? Okay well actually let's start with my book of days. So I last filmed on the on Monday, actually, the 21st of November was the last time I filmed. So obviously we came to the end of November. So 
that was where my November stickering took me in the end. I don't think I really added any more to it actually since last time I showed it to you. So that was that. And then uh, here we are now with where I've got to with December so far. So I've used some of the stickers from my new uh, Imaginarium book actually because they've got some nice Christmassy ones in there. So I think those the little snowman family, aren't they cute? They were out of there. Um, a couple of other things I've put on for a reason. So obviously I've put like a Merry Christmassy type one. I've put a cardinal on because when I went to uh, America in October, I was lucky enough to see a cardinal. And oh my, it was so beautiful. Really, really pretty. I was very excited. <laughs> It was one of the highlights, actually, and my trip was seeing a cardinal. My son said to me, Mum, what is that beautiful reddy orange bird out there? And I looked and went, oh, it's a cardinal. I've actually seen one in real life. So, yeah, what a pretty bird. Really pretty. Um, so, yeah, I've put a book in as well because, you know, that's the way I roll. I like reading. And I've put a perfume bottle in because... Um, I've dropped a few heavy hints to my husband that I'd quite like. I'm running out of perfume. And I'd quite like one for Christmas. So there you go. That's what I've um, stickered up so far. Okay, so. Oh, what should we start with? Let's start with my finishes then, shall we? So I'm, I'm looking around. I've got stuff everywhere. And I'm thinking, where, should, where can I put anything down? Uh, let's put that over there. Right, let's start with my finishes. So you can probably guess the first one because it really wasn't very far off last time I showed you this. So I haven't FFO'd anything yet. You know, I finished uh, Stitch All The Things in my last video. I haven't FFO'd that yet. I thought I made a bit of decision about the backing fabric. And now I'm in two minds about it. So, and not only that, but if I'm really honest with you, I just have not had time to spend any time doing finishing. So it's just going to have to wait. But I've got more finishes now to add to the pile. And it's not like me to have a pile of things to be finished. Anyway, the one that I finished um, that I'm going to show you first is from Sweet Wing Studio. And it's called Sweater Weather. Um, and I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And this is it finished. Ta-da! So yeah, I did go ahead and finish it. And I'm really pleased with it. Really pleased with it. So I stitched this on 32 count I think it's called Kuhn. It's K-H-U-N-E from Chromatic Alchemy. It's a 32 count. Um, is it linen, this one, or even weave? I think it's even weave, actually. So um, I used all of the called for colours, with the exception of the white, which are the called for, I think, was B5200, and I swapped it out for a uh, sulky white. So there we go. It uses a couple. There's a couple of classic colour works in there in his jumper, but the rest is DMC as well. So I, I think I started this last December, and I finished it this December. I uh, can't remember what date I finished it, but it's in my book of days. But yeah, so it's only taken me a year, and it's not very big. Although the white stitching took a bit of doing. I'll tell you what I do hate stitching, though. I mean, I didn't mind stitching all that white. Once I'd discovered sulky white and found that I much like, much preferred it um, for the way it brought my stitches out. So I think, you know, for white stitching, that's come out pretty neat, actually. Pretty neat. I'm really pleased with it. Um, but I don't do not like do not like at all stitching all these, I don't know if you can see them properly, all these little white doodad things, the, the like snowflake drops. Oh, 
I really don't enjoy single stitches like that at all. All that starting and stopping and, you know, because they're so far apart, you can't, if I carried them on the back, it'd be too much of a mess. And I'm not a big, don't get me wrong, I'm not a big, I'm not fanatical about having neat backs. I'm really not because I just figure, well, there's only me that's going to see them, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but I wouldn't carry a thread across to do those. So it was lots of stopping and starting with those. And I still haven't quite made my mind up what to do with this. I don't know whether to do it as a flat fold, whether to do it in a hoop. Because what I thought was I could do it in a hoop, maybe put a white ribbon around the hoop, you know, and maybe put, I don't know, a little charm or something on it. I don't know. Or, or, or whether to finish it as a pillow with some white chenille around the outside and maybe a little bell or something as a little charm or something on it but then if I do that I, I haven't really thought about backing fabric I can back it with some white felt if I do it in a hoop um, or the flat fold as well I, don't, I have got some Christmassy fabrics but nothing that really sings to me to go with this so it might not actually even be FFO for this Christmas I don't know, because the problem at the moment is that um, I can order some fabric and generally, normally it would come pretty quickly. But because Royal Mail are striking at the moment, the whole of the mail service is completely disrupted. Um, and, you, you know, you just can't guarantee when you're going to get it, going to get anything. So. So I don't know, uh, I, you know. It could be a while before that gets FFO'd, we shall see. Right, let me put that one out of the way. Okay, and then the second one I finished was a little bit of a surprise finish, even for me. So, um, I, if I've got a picture of where I had this one last time, I'll show it to you, I'll put it in. Um, but I may not have, I'm not sure. So this is um, called White Christmas and it's one of a set of four pillows from the Little Stitcher. Uh, and yeah, I picked this one up because I just thought, oh, while I'm in the mood to do those doodad things that I don't like doing, <laughs> I knew one of the reasons I hadn't finished this one was because of the doodad things. Um, but I finished it, so here it is i'm sorry for the hoop marks i don't very often stitch in a hoop but i did with this one because it's really quite small it's only tiny and um i had it downstairs just in my hand while i was watching tv to finish it off so it's in a hoop so here it is isn't he cute now this one uh is stitched on 32 count raw silver by zweigart and this is linen and um I used all the cord for. There's only four colours in this, uh, and the white in this one is three eight six five, and I'd started it in three eight six five, so I couldn't swap it to sulky. But I don't think I don't know if you can see a bit of a comparison actually. I don't think my stitches on that three eight six five are anywhere near as neat as they are on that square weather. Don't know. What do you think? But anyway, he is cute. I do like him. There's another three to go in the series. Um, so I will start one of those soon, no doubt. Um, but yeah, I've had that one hanging around for a long time as well. And that one is definitely going to be finished in a pillow. And I have decided how... I have got some backing fabric. I'm going to leave the backing fabric pretty plain on this one because of the sparkly front i'm going to um maybe just put some sort of beige ticking on this one something like that and i might finish it with a chenille trim i might not i don't know yet it depends how it looks once i've done it so that's that one. Oh, and talking of chenille finishing chenille trim finishing um vonifer the twisted stitcher has bought out a couple of 
brilliant new tutorials um, for finishing things and one of them is how to finish a pillow with a chenille trim so I haven't watched it yet but I shall be watching that because I I have done a pom-pom finish before but I haven't done chenille so I shall be watching that because her her tutorials are just brilliant aren't they so um, I shall watch that before I finish that off right okay so they're my two finishes so let's move on to let's do my new start because i had a new start first okay so in my last video i asked you guys for some advice because i said i was going through a bit of startitis yep it finally got to me i, I just wanted to start all the things and, um, you know, and I asked you what you thought, whether you thought I would come to regret it or, you know, should I just go for it and not worry about it? What should I do? Um, and the majority of you, not everybody, but the majority of you suggested that, um, yes, I should start things if I want to start them. Maybe phase things in gradually rather than start everything all at once and then ending up feeling in overwhelmed which I thought was some pretty good advice actually and then um, because originally I got the idea from Lynn the Lancashire Sitcher because she was doing 12 starts in December I know Kim the Contented Stitch is doing I think 12 starts for New Year's Eve um, and I thought well I haven't got 12 kitted up anyway so that's not really an issue and then Natalia from Crafting with Natalia said she'd got quite a few things to start um, as well. And how about if we sort of start one each weekend or something in December? And I thought, well, yeah, that's a bit more sensible, actually. Why don't I do that instead? So that's my what I decided to do. So I thought, well, that gives me potentially four new starts. Um, and, and I think that's that's enough. You know that will satisfy my my wanting to start things and and i've got i have got more than four kitted up but i thought well that's a couple of things you know that i can bring into the new year so i know uh um angela mrs miggins came up with a good idea because she suggested maybe doing a new start to celebrate some of the landmarks that we have like you know is king charles's coronation next may for example and yeah, I probably will start something for that. That was a good idea too. Um, and some people were like, well, you know, don't end up becoming overwhelmed with too many whips. And that's really good advice, which is why I thought I'm not going to start 12. I'm not. I could have kitted up 12 quite easily, but I'm not going to. Um, anyway, so that's kind of what I'm going to do. So I started one last weekend. I will start one this weekend. I'm not sure which one it's going to be yet. Not sure. And I have got whichever one it is and the other one will be started as well next weekend. Um, OK, so I'll, I'll talk about those in plans. The one that I started was one I've had kitted for ages and ages and ages and wanted to start. Um, and I definitely felt justified that I could start this because I'd finished Sweater Weather and... Um, and white christmas so i started plum street samplers cow pile so here it is lots you've seen this so many people have stitched the animal stack charts of hers and i have got quite a few of them but i thought this is the first one that i bought at the, the um animal stack so i'm going to do this one first and i like cows i like all farm animals actually and i'm quite happily stitch them all i like cows i like sheep as you know i love love me a chicken as well so yeah so i've started this one here's my start i've only worked on it one one stitchy session so far and i started in the middle so i've started with the middle cow um i am stitching this using all the cord for uh, floss which are a mixture of wheat style works classic color works oh yeah just those two there's no ghast in it so 
so yeah and i uh i'm not using the cool for fabric because i didn't have any in my stash so it calls for picture this plus oaken and i've used picture this plus 36 count legacy which is my absolute favorite fabric <laughs> so so there we go with my little start on that one so yeah i can't wait to get back to stitching on this one i am stitching this one one over two so yeah yeah really like that so that can go in my little collection of smalls okay so let's move on to my full coverage that i've been working on so i've worked on three since i last saw you um let me just i need to just check how many stitches i've done on this one because i don't think it's many right i can even be precise so i worked on this one for three evenings and one of them didn't get much at all so some of my evening stitching has been a bit poor actually because i've been so busy at work i mean just it has been so 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 busy and at the minute I, th I might have mentioned in my last video, I'm looking after two hotels. So my my own one at Stansted, but I'm also I've also been looking after um, a hotel called Luton Who, which is completely different to Stansted. It's um, it's a Grade One listed building. It is set in 110 acres of um, landscaped gardens which were designed by capability brown um it's a real five-star luxury hotel with tons of history to it anyway it's completely different to what I, I usually go to every day so i'm kind of looking after both uh just until the middle of january um but yeah it, it's every time i go to luton which is quite a drive for me um I'm totally shared by the time I get home. It, it's it's a 12 hour day every time I do it. Um, and I have stitched when I've got in, but it may be a hundred stitches and, and I'm done and wanting to go to bed. So um, next time I go over there, I'll try and take a few pictures um, just for you guys that like a bit of history because this place has tons of history to it. Uh, and it is really, some of the things are quite breathtaking to see so I'll take some I'll take some pictures to show you anyway so the first one that I worked on is Magic Forest um, well it's not actually it's the last one that I worked on oh never mind doesn't matter does it I'm going to show you all three so I'll put a picture of Magic Forest where you saw it last time And I've done 870 stitches on this one. So I had it out for three evenings because I hadn't had it out for a, a little while. And you probably won't notice an awful lot of difference because I'm still working in the foliage, etc. So here it is now. So this is a chart by, it's charted by Heaven and Earth Hade. And the artwork is by Kiro Marchetti. And this is a stitch along that I'm doing with Jemima, the rocking stitcher. Now, quite a few people are doing this and lots of people have made a lot more progress than I have. This is my biggest whip, I think. So the total stitch count on this one's 402,000 stitches. And I think I am at maybe just under 3%, maybe. I don't know. You'll know for sure when I do my whip parade because I'll do all the stats then. Anyway, I'm stitching this one on 28 count easy guide and it is two over one ten stitch. But yeah, I'm still working <laughs> all this greenery. So yeah, not much to see with that one, but I did want to get it out for a little while. I had a little whim to get that one out. Right, the next one I worked on, I haven't worked on it 
this month but I worked on it after I saw you last month and I've done how many stitches have I done on this one three four six seven I've done 1,300 stitches on this one since you last saw it. So this one's from Pain Free Crafts and it's Blackberry Dragon. The artwork's by Stanley Morrison. Um, I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And even though I've put over a thousand stitches into it, I still haven't got to the dragon. So here we are with it. I'm still coming down all this background. In fact, I worked more in the moon this time and came down here a bit more. Um, but yeah, I, keep, I must be getting to the dragon soon. I must be. And uh, yeah, I think he comes in down here somewhere. It's not... Not that far off, but yeah, I'm still plugging away. <laughs> plugging away at the backgrounds at the moment. So again, this one is stitched on 28 count easy guide, two over one, 10 stitch. But yeah, there is a stitch along for this one as well. So I'm stitching this one with Dizzy Stitcher and um, a whole host of other people. There's loads of people doing it. Teresa Little Stitch is doing it. Anita the Violet Stitch is doing it. Oh, lots and lots of people. Um, this is Stanley's Dragon Cell, is what it's called. So, yeah, if you're stitching a Stanley Morrison dragon, doesn't have to be this one. It can be any of his dragons. Then, uh, you know, please feel free to join in on that hashtag. So, yeah, that's where we are with that one. And then um, I, my last... Uh, full coverage that I worked on is um, one that you, you know I'm going to have worked on this one. So um, this is also by Pain Free Crafts and this is Cheese Delivery and the artwork is by Chris Dunn. Again I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time and what it looks like when it's finished. And this is where I'm at with it now. And my goal was to get to 50% completion on this one by the end of the year. And I have completed more than 50%. I think I'm at 51% now. Um, I think I've completed uh, 62,500 stitches on this one. So yeah, halfway there pretty much. I think there's 123,000 stitches in this all together. Um, I have not stitched on it in December yet. Oh yes, I have, sorry, I lied. Two days I have, 6.40. Um, but since you last saw it, 15. Since you last saw it, I've done 1,500 stitches. So not masses, but I just wanted to get to that 50%. Um, predominantly, I I finished off these cheeses over here pretty much. Yeah, they're finished now, those. And then I've been working on this middle section here to kind of bring that down. And there's quite a bit of confetti in that. It's quite heavy going, that bit. Um, so, yeah, I... To be honest, I've given this one a break for the last week, I think. Last time I stitched on this was the 2nd of December. Haven't stitched on it since. I swapped out and did a bit on Magic Forest. Um, and I had a couple of days where I haven't stitched full coverage. I gave this one a little bit of a rest instead of pursuing with it, persevering with it, because... I don't want to burn out on this by, you know, feeling like I've got to stitch on it all the time. Um, I have got a goal to finish it by my birthday in November next year. Don't know, because I've, I've got to do 5,000 stitches a month to achieve that. And I don't really want to tie myself to that target. I'll do what I can, and I still love stitching it. 
um, and I will stitch on it again this month, but it probably, it won't get 5,000 stitches this month. I'll start that goal in January to do 5,000 on it. But I may not do it, and if I don't do it, well, I don't, but, you know, but I'm glad, I'm really pleased I got to 50%. Even my husband's getting excited with this one now. You know, he normally looks at them when I get any of those other ones out and he's like, oh, there's not much to see on that one yet. But every time he looks at this one, he's like, show me where it's at now. Show me what it looks like now. So, yeah, even he even he takes an interest and he's not really interested in cross-stitch. Right, so... Oh, I don't understand. I said interesting. He's... No, Siri, not now. I'm not sure, Anne. Go away. I mean, really? Stop it. Right. Sorry about that. Okay, what did I stitch on next? Uh, let's show you another cell, shall we? Okay, so this is a stitch along that I am doing with Crafting Kirsty and Steve from Crafty Stitches UK. And um, this is The Christmas Witch by Kathy Barrick. This is what it looks like when it's finished. Cute chart. This is the first Kathy Barrick I've stitched and I do like it, do like it. And this, hopefully I'll put, oh, Hopefully I'll put a picture in it where you saw it last time. God, I'm spitting all over the space now. I'm so sorry, people. Seriously, what is the matter with me today? <laughs> uh, right, okay. Let's normal service resume. Okay, so uh, here is where we are at with this one now. So I've started doing the bottom of the witch's skirt here. I've had to, I've shunted this one across in the Q snap actually in order to come and finish the skirt off because I haven't quite got, it's gonna be a big witch this one. Um, Kirsty's already stitched the witch and, um, and as you can see, <laughs> I haven't, I started in a different place. Steve has come up this way and he's stitching the cat on the mat and I'm going this way, um, and I'm gonna stitch the rat first, I think. Well, I st I've done a bit of this because I got a bit bored with doing the, with doing the words in. Uh, I couldn't quite fit in. She stitched her, I suppose the same mat, but it's too far that way in the Q-snap, and I'll, I'll come back to that, so. So yeah, that's where we are with this one. This one I am stitching on 35 count Harvest Blush by Sparklies. And I'm using all the called for floss, which I think is, there's not many uh, flosses in this one. Oh, I'm not sure off the top of my head what they are. There's a couple of gentle arts in this, I think. Um, and then the rest DMC. But yeah, I love this fabric. I really love it. But yeah, that's stitched one over two. So that's that one. Right, and then I fancied stitching a fancy lady. Now you won't see a lot of difference on this one, but I have stitched on it. Uh, so I took out, because I have not stitched on this one since um, I went to retreat in September. So this is a Bella Philippine, Bella Filipina, and it's a Greta Gold Broom. This is what she looks like when she's finished. I love this chart. And I'll put a picture in where you saw it last time. And you probably won't notice an awful lot of difference. This is where I'm at now, so I'm still working on her big skirt. Um, this one is stitched on a fabric by Chromatic Alchemy, and I just cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head. Sorry, I'm looking over there because 
the project bag's over there. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I'll tell you next time I get it out because I just can't remember um, what it is now. I know it's a. Uh, it's called Cirrus. Of course it is. Oh, I might have to start again with this in a minute. Right. So this is thirty-two count opalescent uh, linen in the colourway Cirrus from Chromatic Alchemy. So I stitched my. I'm stitching mine on not quite such a moody fabric as they've actually the called for has been used used on anyway but i am using all the called for floss so which is predominantly dmc there is a the dreaded chronic in this um which you know i've put my big girl pants on and ordered the chronic i've got the chronic actually as part of my haul i've just bought the whole embellishment pack for this, uh, which I bought from Arts and Designs. So that's where we are with that one. Uh, and I was glad to get this one out again. This is, this was a start along that I started at the Essex Needles Retreat in September. I started it with Teresa Little Stitcher and Gina Stitches. So we are all doing this one. You, you'll have seen Teresa stitching on this one um, on one of her live streams. So that's where we are with that one. Uh, right, the next one I worked on, um, I only bought this one out yesterday and I haven't worked on this one for absolutely ages. I don't know why, but I haven't. Anyway, I've got this the two whip go numbers left to complete, which is one and four. So one is to stitch on a summer project for five days. I haven't started that yet. It will be done by the end of December, but I haven't started it yet. And the other one is to stitch on a sampler for five days. And my sampler of choice to stitch on is this one. So this is my long dog sampler and it's called Spirit of Clanfair PG. Um, like I said, I haven't stitched on this for absolutely ages and I thought, oh, I need to get this out because I do enjoy stitching it and I want to finish it next year. So um, I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and where you saw it last time. And all I've done with this one yesterday, yesterday was a bit of a, I was off yesterday, but it was a bit of a mad busy day because I was trying to get my, I had to go out and get my, the rest of my Christmas shopping, what I hadn't ordered online, I wanted to go to the shops and get. So I did that. So I didn't have a lot of stitchy time yesterday afternoon. So I, I but I did get this out because I wanted to start on one of the whip go numbers and I finished this spoon up here. So this is stitched on 28 count Knox from Chromatic Alchemy um, and I am using silks on this one. So three of the silks are dinky dyes. So this is Ghost Gum, this is Quicksilver and this is uh, Robin's Egg. And then the variegated is a silk from Exude Designs called Pe Peacock Fuchsia. So yeah, that's where we are with this one. And I'm stitching this one two over two. But I am 53% complete on this now. So, you know, I'm over halfway. So just need to keep going. I've been a bit lax with the back stitch as well. <laughs> so I started off with all good intentions. Every time I completed a spoon, I'd do, I'd, I would do the back stitch. Um, no, that's kind of gone by the wayside. I need to get back to uh, this needs back stitching. Um, I don't think there's any on that spoon there, but there's some little ones dotted around as well that need. So there's some backstitch on this up here too. Yeah, need to need to get back to that before the backstitch gets too overwhelming, I think. Right, um, the final one I worked on, and I've worked on this one quite a lot. Um, I have been watching the football quite a bit in the evenings. The games yesterday were just... <gasps> brilliant really really brilliant and England are playing France tonight so 
Uh, we'll see how we get on with that one. But um, yeah, yesterday's games I really enjoyed. Anyway, I wanted something that was really easy stitching while I'm watching the football in the evening. And I decided it was going to be this one because I want to get this one finished, basically. So this is uh, Salem Trials the Witch Hunt by the Little Stitcher. Here it is rather appropriate with my sweatshirt I've got on today. Um, I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And I've taken this one out of Q-Snap to show you, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see what I've done since last time, I think. So apologies again, it's not been ironed. Here it is now. So I've, I have completely finished the top half of the piece. And I'm now working on the bottom half. So I've almost finished that big house. And then I've just got the gallows and the church to do. I say I only got, oh, and the wording underneath, which is, says Massachusetts 1692. So, yeah, that house has got some amount of stitching in it. Believe me, I've just got the steps to do uh, and a little bit on that corner there. So I'll easily get that done. But yeah, this is stitched on 32 count vintage country mocha and I'm using all the gold four colours, which are all DMCs. And there's not many of them, so it's a bigger piece than you think this is. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to get this finished this year. So, uh, so yeah, I have put aside my full coverage in the evenings at the minute because the other reason I did is this is lots of block stitching. You know, big old pieces, um, that big old house, all those ladies were big old ladies to stitch. And it's just quite mindless. And at the moment, where I've been really tired in the evenings, that's what I need, rather than something that requires any real thought from me to do. So that's where we are with my stitching. That's everything I've stitched on. Okay, so on to, so Whitgo, like I said, I've got, I've got complete one and four. They're the only two numbers I've got left to finish. Um, one is Summer Project. I am in two minds which one. I've got a couple of Summer Projects I can use. Not sure which one I'm going to do for that. Um, and the other one I'm going to use that long dog and do five days on that. So I've done a day on it. I've got another four to go. Uh, but I've already got a different project out today on my Lowry to do. <laughs> Um, which is, um, I don't know if you can see it behind me, that's my Morris Dancer. Uh, I haven't worked on any of my traditional samplers for a little while and I am feeling, uh, I am pining to work on them. I am missing doing them. So I am going to have another new start tomorrow and um, I, it's a bit of a toss up really. It's one of two that I can start. Um, Bear with me one minute. Uh, da -da. Oh. Right, after all that, I can't find to show you. Never mind. Okay. Okay, so I have the choice. So I can either start Autumn from the Cricut Collection. Um, those of you that have watched me for a while will know that I finished Summer earlier this year uh, and my next one is autumn it's all kitted it's all ready to go so I can start that and the other one that I've got is um, Halloween Quaker now I've had which is by Leela's studio lots of people have stitched it I'm quite sure loads of you have seen it so it doesn't matter if I don't show you the picture so I've got that as well so both of those are quite big projects um Halloween Quaker uh, is one of the very first patterns I, I bought when I started cross-stitching. Um, I know loads of people have stitched it. I have pulled out um, Picture This Plus Murky to stitch it on, but I may change my mind. I might use Haunted instead. Um, I've just got to find the fabric. Seriously, I've got to sort my craft room out big time. <laughs> I just don't know where the fabric is for that one at the moment. So, yeah, I need to need to find that. But I can't make my mind up whether I want to stitch it in murky or haunted. But it will be one of the other. I don't know. 
I don't know. You'll see next week which one I start. It'll be one of those two. Um, okay, so that that's sort of in my plans. I've got um, a couple more projects I can start after that. But I'm just waiting for the floss to arrive. Like I said, Royal Mail's a bit bleh, all over the place at the moment. Um, I've ordered quite a lot of overdyes. Um, some of them are to start the pink sampler house from Plum Street Samplers, which is um, my New Year's Day start with Stitchy Sally. Uh, so that will be that weekend start, so to speak. And then uh, I can either start Halloween Quaker or Autumn, one of those two. And then I've also got a little um, Plum Street Christmassy sheep chart as well as another small because um, one thing I did think, oh, and I've got the next white Christmas to start, but they're already in my project bag, kind of. I've counted the four pillows as one project really for those, so it doesn't really count. <coughs> I'm busy doing my Whip Go board for next year. Um, it's gonna be the same as this year, pretty much. Uh, so this year, what I did with Whip Go, last year when I chose specific projects to stitch on, it went very badly for me and I did, I fell off the wagon with it after about three months. This year, it's been really successful by swapping things around and picking things like being broader with what I choose. So, you know, it's full coverage, 3,000 stitches. Absolutely fine because it was my choice which one I could choose. Stitch on spring project for five days, brilliant. I could choose one of those. Stitch on smalls for a week. You know, all those sort of things were really good this year. Uh, I probably will introduce Stitch on a Fancy Lady uh, because I have got a couple now and I have got another one that potentially I want to start. Not quite yet, but soon. Um, so I will have a choice of three of those to stitch on. Um, I might put sampler, I've got more samplers now than I started the year with, so I might put sampler in there um, more, I think I've got it in there twice, I might put it in there three times, um, so I might, I'll jiggle around with it, but it will be the same principle as this year. Uh, the other thing I did see with Whipgo that I thought was just a brilliant idea for anybody like me who is absolutely rubbish uh, organising floss or your craft room and all that kind of stuff if you saw my craft room seriously things are in boxes and that so it's not everywhere everywhere for what say when I film but there isn't really any semblance of order to them you know so you know, all my DMC are in a big box thing they are all on rings so I know like which rings got all the three eights on and which rings got the four hundreds on and they are on rings but they're not it's not particularly orderly and my fabric is not orderly at all it's just in a massive massive pile and I could at least sort that into you know the different counts at the very least and my charts are just all over the show too and that's without my sewing fabric so yeah so I did see on somebody's whip go board they'd they'd put uh, a box on there for organized craft room for a week or whatever or organize their floss for a week and I thought what good idea that is because <laughs> it would make you maybe want to do it then or you know to cover off that goal so I might stick one of those in, maybe. I don't know, maybe not, I don't know. But I did think it was a good idea. Okay, uh, haul, I've got a little bit of haul. So um, I've got bought two charts because I figured I haven't got enough Christmas charts. So I bought two. So this one you would have seen, a lot of people are stitching this at the moment. Um, I saw Tina from Simply in Stitches. She finished this ages ago. And then Megan from Coffee Craft Fabrics. She just showed this on Facebook as completed. Craft and Kirsty's stitching this. Um, so I thought, oh, I need to get it. So this is by Stitch Rovia, Emma Comden. And it is the classic Christmas pudding. 
so I bought the PDF. I know it is available in one of the previous cross stitch magazines. Can't remember which one, but if you have Readly, maybe you can find it. Uh, I don't. I used to have Readly, but I didn't use it enough, so I cancelled my subscription to that. So I just bought the chart. It was it was cheap. It wasn't expensive. Just got it off of Stitch Rovia's Etsy shop. Uh, but I do think it'd look great stitched up in my kitchen. I really liked seeing everybody else's um, that they're stitching on. Uh, it looks like a lot of confetti in that Christmas pudding, and there's a lot of back stitch going on there. So I'm, I'm not going to start it anytime soon. But I do really like it. So that was that one. And then the only other chart I bought, I got this one from Trudy at Jeff P. Smith on eBay. So this one is by Artful Offerings and it's How the Finch Stole Christmas. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Like I said, I haven't got a lot of Christmas charts, but that one really, really appealed to me. I really liked it. And she tells you how to finish it off as a little uh, hanging pillow as well but yeah isn't he cute so i'll start that one at some point don't know when but you know so that was my only charts i didn't buy any fabric this time um i did get some of these so vista print were having a black friday sale I like using their business cards as floss drops, which was something that Michelle from Mama Loves You GB started when we all did the great floss drop trade a while ago. I think it's too expensive to do it now with the price of postage. But anyway, um, I'd run out of my floss drops and, um, and I used quite a lot of other people's that they sent me as well. And I'm want to kit up quite a big project so i got 500 uh vista print cards for i think it was about 14 pounds it was really cheap uh anyway I, this is the image i had put on them this time last time i had like an owl at night this time i've gone with like pegasus so yes yeah, so i got 500 of those so they should keep me going for floss drops for a while um, and then I got a couple of needle minders. So I've been waiting for this one to arrive for a while. So this one is from Pedro's Plaques on Etsy. Um, Teresa had a Pedro's Plaques needle minder that she was using at one of our retreats. And uh, I asked her where she got it from. Um, and I went and had a look at their website. And, uh, and I picked out this one, which is a little beehive with a little bee on. They're really nicely made, really cute. They've got some really nice needle minders. So, yeah, I had to wait a little while for that to arrive, but I don't know whether it was because of the post or what, but really nicely made. I really like that. And then I was lucky enough to get another needle miner from Agnes Little Minders. So I bought one of her Christmas collection. Um, so this is the one I got, which was a little dragon. Here he is. Hopefully you can see that. There he is with his gleaming little jewel on. So he was sort of a present to myself for completing another Whitgo line. Uh, was the reason that I got him. Maybe you can see him better in the box, actually. But yeah really cute so i got him i went for one with the bells on because she had some with little bells on them but i just wasn't fast enough my paypal was playing up and uh yeah so that didn't work too well um okay so that's all my stitchy stuff um so if you're not interested in books and you're not interested in knitting um, I will say goodbye to you now and I'd just like to wish all of you a happy Christmas or if you don't celebrate Christmas a happy holidays uh, and I will be back on New Year's Eve which is when I'm due to film next and when I will film next 
uh, with my end of year whip parade and I'm really excited to do that. I love doing whip parades and I like watching other people's. So I'm really excited to do mine and it just happens to fall on the right day this year. So yeah, so it won't be a regular update from me next time. It will be a full end of year whip parade. Um, and I'm looking forward to putting that together and seeing my progress with it. Okay, for everybody else, I am going to pause this video for a minute because my um, shopping is due and I will be back with you. Well, for you in a blink of an eye, for me in about 15 minutes. Be back shortly. Hi guys, I'm back again. Okay, that's my shopping been delivered. And um, yeah, so if you stuck with me, welcome back. I'm just going to do uh, my book update and my knitting whips because I'm not going to put those on my whip parade. That would be purely just cross stitch. But I did forget to sh show you one piece of haul that I got. So I bought a new project bag. I haven't had time for ages now to make any of my own. And I like buying other people's because they make them so much better than I can. Um but this is the first time I've bought one from Penelope's Pocket and she makes beautiful bags and the reason I was attracted to this one is because it uses Blackbird fabric. So if this is Blackbird's, oh I forget what the name of it's called, um, but anyway it's Blackbird fabric on this one. There's the backing fabric which really goes with it got a cute little tassel on it as well super well made really like it there's this red version and there's a green version of this bag as well with the green sampler fabric um, and I have dropped a few heavy hints to my husband that I'd like that for Christmas but whether I get it or not is another matter he, um, this one is going to hold my my new year start with Stitchy Sally which um, I keep talking about it and not showing you the chart. So as I've got it in this bag, I'd show you. It's this one. Oh, the sun's really come out now. Which is the um, Pink House Sampler. I keep calling it the Pink Sampler House. It's Pink House Sampler from Plum Street Samplers. And I've just, I only had one of the threads, which was Garden Gate. I've had to order the rest. So um, they should be on their way to me, hopefully. But yeah. That's that. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention is I am collecting the uh, Patchwork Rabbit uh, Advent Calendar. Um, I'm doing that day by day and uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's the first time I've ever done an Advent Calendar that's not, you know, one of the normal. I always buy an old fashioned one every year where you open the um, doors, you know, and you've got little pictures behind it. And I've got one of those and I've got a chocolate one that my husband bought me, but I treated myself to the patchwork rabbit one. And I'm not going to show you all the bits for that because there's plenty of really good floss tubes out there where um, you can see that for yourself with the opening of them. So the ones I've been watching, watching and I love Flossmas, but I'm getting a bit behind with like um, keeping up with them. I, I think I'm going to have to binge watch a few later today when I do after I've uploaded this video um, so I have been trying to keep up with um, Stitchy Rach so she's showing the unboxing of the Patchwork Rabbit Advent and she's also doing um, a couple of knitting ones as well Lay Family Yarn is one of them I can't remember the other one so but if you like knitting as well then you, you will enjoy um, Rachel's Flossmas it's very good um, and I've been watching Mama Loves You GB and she opens the Patchwork Rabbit Advent as well and she also has a Marks and Spencer's Advent calendar that she's opening and she's got, like me, she seems to like the old fashioned um, Advents as well but her one's quite amusing. I think hers has got like a row of houses and she talks about the children in it and how they're all being held captive and that is it's quite it does make me chuckle quite amusing to watch so i've been watching her i've also been watching a couple of people that haven't been 
opening the Patchwork Rabbit Advent. And I've loved opening mine every morning. It's really brought a smile to my face. Um, I particularly liked the corner gauge that we got yesterday because I haven't got one. So that was really useful because I keep looking at them and meaning to buy one. Um, but I've also been watching uh, Mad Morty. So she's been doing an advent that her husband David put together for her. Uh, and she's been telling Christmas jokes every day uh, and they've been quite amusing too. So I've been watching her and I've also been watching Crafty Emily because I watched Crafty Emily last Philosophers and really enjoyed watching her again this year too. Um, so yes, I like catching up with uh, Emily. How on earth at this time of year she manages to fit in so much stitching with um all the events that she's having to work out as well I don't know so hats off to you with that one Emily um so yeah and then intermittently I have picked up a couple of other people's uh Flossmases. I have watched a couple of uh the Diddy stitchers um I've I have a few I have to catch up with those still um I think that's it I don't think I've watched any more so yeah so they're the Flossmases that I've watched and I've, I've watched all the normal YouTubers that I really like watching. Um, I haven't watched anybody new lately, um, <clears throat> but I have got a new one to watch. Um, oh no, I have watched somebody new. I've watched Crafting with Mildred. Mildred is one of my subscribers and she's lovely. She's been a subscriber of mine for a long time. And Mildred's just started doing her own um, YouTube channel and I've only watched a couple of them so far but she's only filmed a couple but they're really good and she's got some really good projects so yeah I think it's crafting with Mildred I could be wrong and I'll, I'll link it below because I just know her as Mildred so but um, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll try and link her below but she's got some great projects really well worth looking at and then I there's a new um, new floss tuber to me. I think she's called the Flightless Stitcher. She's from New Zealand, uh, and I'm going to go and check her out as well. I haven't watched her yet, but I will check her out. Anyway, on to books and knitting. So with just with books, I've only read one since I last saw you. Completely read one, um, and the one that I read, I've just brought my Kindle with me was The Wedding Party by Kathy Kelly. I've read some of Kathy Kelly's books before. These are really good reads if you want something a bit mindless that you haven't got to think too much about. Um, sort of a, you know, late night bedtime read they're good for, I think. They're quite, sort of, they're a bit chick lit, so good for lazing around the pool in the summer and that kind of thing, but, um, or, you know, if you want a bit of a feel-good read and you want a bit of a duvet day, then then pretty good for that, I'd say, as well. So, yes, yeah, so that's Kathy Kelly, The Wedding Party. I, I will put it down in the show notes below. Um, I gave it a three out of five just because it, it's a bit predictable, you know. It's kind of, it's about um, uh, an Irish family and a little bit about each each one of the people in the family and... And they all come to, they're organising this wedding party, basically, for their parents. Um, but yeah, so it's it's not a bad book, it's not. So, and like I say, Kathy Kelly, really easy reading. Um, I'm And then I'm reading at the moment a book that was recommended to me by Gina Stitches. Um, and this is called The Skeleton Key by Erin Kelly. I'm only about 10% of the way into the book at the moment, but I already very much like what I'm reading. Uh, it's a little bit different and uh, yeah, no, I really like it. So thank you, Gina, for the recommendation because I'm really enjoying reading it. And hopefully I will have finished that by next time I film a, a normal floss tube. So I'll be able to tell you a bit more about it. And I hadn't then after I finished that one, I have got another one uh, in the queue to read, which is um, a book that was recommended by one of my viewers. So it's 
um, well, she didn't particularly recommend a book, but she recommended an author. So the author is Cynthia Harrod Eagles, um, and she writes historical fiction, and she's written a whole um, series. She's written quite a lot of books, but there's one that's a complete series, and I think there's 13 books in the series. I could be wrong, but anyway, I bought the first one called The Founding to read, so I'm going to start that after I finish The Skeleton Key. Um, but yeah, thanks ever so much for your recommendations. Uh, you know, keep them coming, keep them coming, because sometimes, you know, what Amazon throws up on my recommended is not like, mm, yeah, maybe. And some try, I'm on the Goodreads app as well. Sometimes trying to trawl through Goodreads looking for um, something I might want to read is also a little bit of a challenge. So. If you've got any recommendations of books that you've read, if I've read them, I'll tell you in the comments. Um, but if I haven't, if it's anything to do usually with either historical fiction or um, anything that's kind of a bit suspensey, that kind of thing, um, I generally really like it. OK, so that's my book review for this time. So knitting. So if you don't like knitting, this is not going to be for you so you know no offense taken if you want to log off now and go and watch someone else um i've only got three whips so this is not going to take long so i will show you i'm not sure i'm not sure if i've got pictures that i can put in i definitely haven't of where you saw them last time but i may have some pictures of what the finished pattern looks like um so the first one is my oldest knitting whip um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to reach over here and and collect it. So this one, I am knitting um, a shawl blanket and uh, it's a really simple stitch, this one. Really simple. So it, I think it's called the Elysian shawl blanket. It was a free pattern on Lovecraft's and um it's a really simple stitch i chose to knit this because a it's really nice and warm what i'm knitting and um it's a really simple easy pattern and i can mindlessly knit this while i'm watching tv um so this is where it is at i've done bleh, quite a lot of it actually i'm more than halfway through on this so yeah, it's designed just to like, so you can just put it around your shoulders if it's like cold. It's a really thick, chunky wool, this one. But this pattern, these chevrons are so simple. Simple, simple, simple. It's simply knits and pearls. That's all it is. Really simple. So if you're quite new or not a confident knitter, this is an ideal project for you. Or just something that you want to mindlessly stitch while you're watching telly. So I'm using the called for uh, yarn with this one, which is by Two of Wands, You and Me. Um, it's like I say, a chunky wool. I don't know what the colourway is, so it's not telling me. But you can see it's like a silvery grey. Um, so yeah, that's where I am with that one. And I have not picked this one up for absolutely ages. So <laughs> I don't know why I haven't. I just haven't. I've just looked at it and thought, mm, yeah, yeah, maybe, but and then not picked it up. So that's where we are with that one. Don't know if that will be finished this winter or not. I don't know. Is the honest answer. Okay, and then the other one that I've been uh, knitting on, and I. Did I stopped knitting on this during the spring and summer and I picked it up again. I started it last autumn um, after I finished this one, actually. So uh, so this is a proper blanket. So this one is the Bernat Horseshoe Blanket. Um, and again, this one is a free pattern on Lovecrafts. 
this is where <laughs> ah, ah. hopefully you can see those cables so we've got cables and like these sort of there's cables there's a bit of moss stitch there's a bit of rib in this um i like this because it, it knits up pretty quick i think i'm on coming to the end of the second ball of yarn of this one and i am using burnett um yarn on this this is burnett super chunky blanket yarn i think the colorway is purple haze but I bought this one just to, my lounge is like greys and lilacs and purples and hence why I bought this colourway because I thought this would just be handy in the winter to get out and if it's cold I can just bung it over me on the chair. But at the moment the lovely thing about knitting blankets in this weather is as it grows obviously it covers your lap and it keeps you nice and warm. So that's where I am with that one. This has got quite a few mistakes in it. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, generally speaking, the, the wool is really forgiving. Uh, and because it's so big, it doesn't really notice if you make a mistake, if I'm honest. So, yeah, there are a few, few counting errors in that one. And then finally, my little bit of my little stitching if you like I am currently knitting another pair of socks because um, I like knitting socks basically so uh, the ones that I'm knitting this time these are um, vanilla socks still they're it's favorite vanilla socks I can't remember who the designer is anyway it's a free pattern on Ravelry and um, I've just I've cast on the first sock and I'm just like not even halfway through the leg on those. There you go. Ooh, the sun's come out and it doesn't really do this yarn justice actually. So that's where I am with that one and I am using I really love these uh seal striping yarns, I really do. This one is obviously it's four ply or fingering weight yarn if you're in the US. This is Zandra Rose Signature 4-ply. It's from West Yorkshire Spinners. And I, I like West Yorkshire Spinners yarns a lot for socks. Um, and this colourway is Woodland Awaken. So, yeah, which I got from Wool Warehouse. So, yeah, that's all my... That's all my um, knitting. So, like I say, not a lot. But I thought I'd show it to you and then we can see where we progress to next year hopefully i'll have that great elysian um shawl blanket finish because i really want to i've got another um knitting pattern waiting in the wings well i've got two actually one of them i, I really miss so one thing i love knitting as well as blankets um i really not like to knit lace patterns now I have to concentrate on those and some of them can be quite challenging but I quite like that um, so I haven't knitted a lace pattern for quite a long time so but I'm not going to do one until I finish one of these whoops I'm much more disciplined with my knitting than I am with my crochet <laughs> I'm not going to end up with a million knitting whoops that's for sure um, but I am just as bad at finishing things because it's been ages this was the last completion that I had um, and the uh, probably the only reason I did this one reasonably quickly was because we were in lockdown for COVID. I think I started this in 2020 and I finished it. It took me a few months to finish it. Okay, that's everything for me today. And um, like I was saying earlier to the to the guys that probably left after my cross stitching, I, I'd like to wish you all a really happy Christmas or happy holidays if you don't celebrate Christmas and um, thank you ever so much for those of you that have been with me all year this year thank you very much if you've come along recently and subscribed to my channel um, 
I haven't I have picked up some subscribers not many but I don't really mind it doesn't matter um you know I I, I think my channel's big enough that when I get all your comments mostly uh, you know I I recognize who you are because you've commented to me before um so you know welcome to everybody that stuck with me and and thank you really thank you so much um it really means a lot to me to come and talk to you guys and i've made some brilliant friends through my channel really really i have um and i can't thank you en enough for that because i i really like being part of this community i really do so anyway that's it for me the next time you see me will be on new year's eve when i'm excited to say i'll be doing my uh whip parade for this year and what my whip go looks like for 2023 although it won't be much different i might have had a couple more new starts um when you next see me uh but anyway that's it for now so take care guys stay safe have a fantastic time over the christmas period whatever your plans are um you know i re really hope you all have a good time and i will hopefully see you all again on new year's eve so bye for now